GG Jackson is a name that probably not a lot of people heard of before Monday night's game versus the Warriors, where he scored 23 points and hit 5 threes. But the youngest player in the NBA has quite a deep history. Jackson at one point was the number one recruit in the high school class of 2023. And before his one and only college season, he was projected to be at worst a lottery pick. Unfortunately, his poor play and a few incidents plummeted his draft stock where the Grizzlies picked him up at number 45. As a mid-second round pick now, not a lot is expected of him, but Gigi's had that chip on his shoulder and he's been exactly what the Grizzlies have been looking for all this time. How's it going, my friend? I'm Alexander from Load Management Media, and let's talk about it. GG Jackson was undoubtedly, even in a loaded 2023 NBA draft, a top 10 talent. He's got all the tools. 6'9", long wingspan, has a pretty jumper, can handle the ball. What else would you actually ask for in a modern day small forward? So, what happened then? Modern day small forward, 45th pick. How did that happen? Gregory Jackson II was initially the first ranked player in the high school class of 2023 and he had committed to UNC, but GG decided to reclass to enter college as a 17 year old last year and play for his hometown college of South Carolina. Playing college at 17 years old, you'd probably think there would be a huge learning curve and that's exactly what there was for GG. In college, Gigi was extremely up and down. His overall stats for college are not that bad. 16 points, 6 rebounds. It looks solid. But his splits were horrible. 37% from the field and 32% from 3. Yikes. At South Carolina, they essentially just let him do whatever he wanted. And that wasn't pretty to watch. Lots of isos, lots of bad shots, and very little wins for the team. That wasn't the structure he needed, clearly. Along with his inconsistent play, there were some other outside factors that were the reasons why he went 45th overall. His attitude was a real question mark for teams looking to pick him. At South Carolina, there were multiple incidents of him criticizing teammates and coaches, even on IG Live for goodness sake. And GG knew it was bad. After being drafted by Memphis, he apologized for his actions saying that that wasn't him that that was somebody else so in combination with his poor play his team success which was also poor and his attitude problems which you can probably guess were poor it was hard to analyze where someone should draft gg the talent was obviously there for sure i know a lot of people were expecting him to come back and maybe play another year at south carolina or maybe transfer somewhere else and if he did he'd probably be a top five pick considering his talent and how weak this draft class is supposedly going to be. Even still, it was projected that he'd go late first, most likely last year. But when he fell to Memphis at 45, GG was excited, and as a Memphis fan, I was ecstatic. GG was exactly the kind of pick and exactly the kind of player that Memphis has been looking for all this time. Throughout Memphis's time being pretty good in the last few years, we've really lacked a versatile small forward that can score and play some solid defense. Usually they're either missing one of those attributes. So having GG for the future, it's going to be awesome. And it's absolutely perfect this year because right now half of Memphis is in hospital beds, medical beds. So we can give GG the time to develop. He doesn't have too much expectation and he can get ready for the future when we're going to really need him. The Grizz are perfect for Gigi. Since Memphis has a culture of grinding and working and has a track record of developing young guys as well as holding them accountable, it's a perfect match. And when Gigi was drafted, he had a chip on his shoulder to prove Memphis right and everyone else wrong. Since Gigi was drafted 45th overall, I still don't know how. He was on a two-way for most of the year. He's been on a two-way for most of the year. So that means that he's been spending a lot of his time in the G League where he's been getting some reps and still trying to figure out some stuff with his game. And overall, the results have been pretty good. Throughout the showcase tourney and the G League regular season, GG is averaging 20 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists, shooting a respectable 43% from the field and 31% from 3. Not bad at all. He's been showing that same talent that we knew he had on a regular basis. It's not perfect, but he's definitely getting better. 
And with all the injuries the Grizzlies have and the improvements Gigi's been making, he's been getting consistent minutes with Memphis. Consistent minutes as of late. And in only nine games, even though a lot of them he's barely played like 50 seconds, legitimately, recently he's been getting consistent rotational minutes and playing decently well. Of course he had his big game versus the Warriors, but the night before he had a career high 20 points versus the Knicks and led the Grizz in scoring. He did follow up his performance versus the Warriors with one point, no field goals scored versus the Timberwolves last night, but hey, the guy was picked 45th overall. It's not gonna come together all just like that. Overall, it's a work in progress, but his shooting and defense for Memphis in the NBA have looked really good. With Ja and the Grizzlies in medical beds, he should play a lot more as the season goes on. And if he keeps his head down and keeps that chip on his shoulder like he's been doing so far, he's going to develop. He just looks like he's been raised to succeed. And he is exactly what the Grizzlies have been waiting for all of these years. When Gigi was drafted, what, like five, six months ago, I actually made a video talking about the three biggest steals of the draft and he was in that video. You can check out a bit more of an in-depth review of that right here. Thank you for watching and as always stay rested. See you in the next one.